Today's episode of Nugget Cast is produced and sponsored by CBT Nuggets. Watch, learn, conquer. Merry Christmas from Nugget Cast. Today we'll share some Christmas cheer and review the top IT trends of 2013. Boys and girls, we're going to read a story today. A very CBT Christmas. Way up in the deep North Pole with Christmas just hours away. Not all was jolly for Santa. His elves were still slaving away. For weeks, old Saint Nick had been sitting perplexed. These techies were driving him bonkers. They wanted annual subscriptions to CBT Nuggets so they too could watch, learn, and conquer. But what these CBT nuggets were had Santa totally perplexed. What happened to old tech, like Nintendos, CDs, and what could possibly be next? Suddenly a squeak was heard. Everyone turned and stared. It was the voice of Norbert, the small elf to which no one cared. I know what CBT Nuggets is, he exclaimed, excited as can be. It's how everything gets done around here. It's my training. That is the key. As the other elves looked on in disbelief, Santa walked over to Norbert with a smile. Can you help me save Christmas for techies and make all their training worthwhile? Norbert's mouth turned up a smile, which became a giant grin. Cisco, CompTIA, Microsoft and cloud computing. It's where it all begins. Santa's eyes lit up. Norbert had just saved the day. Subscriptions to CBT Nuggets were definitely the way. Christmas could easily be turned around, the perfect stocking stuffer. He bellowed to the other elves, get to work, we don't have a buffer. He then turned to Norbert and with his elbow, gave him a little press. How would you like to ride in the sleigh? and guide it with your iPhone 5S. With Norbert and Santa on board, they made every techie's Christmas wish come true. And as they flew through the sky, you could hear even Santa shouting, Hadoop! And that's how Santa began to use the great CBT to help him watch, learn, and conquer, and do so with glee. Happy Holidays from CBT Nuggets. Welcome to NuggetCast, your source for getting the most out of your IT, project management, and office productivity computer-based training. I'm your host, Steve Barth, and today we're celebrating the holiday season. Now, one of the fun things I always enjoy, you know, after the food and the presents, and the hot cocoa and the family memories, but after all that, it is time to reflect back on the year that was 2013. As so many people like to come out with their lists of the top whatever for a given year, we thought we'd do the same. And so today we are presenting our top IT trends of 2013. Now, this isn't a countdown, it's just six things that had us talking throughout the year. So let's get right to it with tip number one coming from Keith Barker. Keith, welcome to NuggetCast. How are you doing this morning? Hey, Steve. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So today we are talking the top IT trends of 2013. Tell me what you think of that. Okay. As far as the top trends for tech in 2013, I would say that my personal favorite is how we're using our smartphones for virtually everything. I mean, just everything we used to reach out for a tablet or for a a PC, we do right from our smartphone. And that's really impacted my life, especially as we get better and better with these tools. In fact, let me share with you a micro nugget that I created on that exact topic. To identify the trends of 2013 as far as smartphone dominance, here is a laundry list of things that I use on my smartphone instead of reaching for a laptop or even a tablet. And my goal is to do this in under two minutes. Number one, a flashlight, compass, maps, network speed test, airline status, banking, credit cards, Craigslist, Bitcoin, Litecoin tracking, stock market tracking, access cloud storage, shopping, financial services, Fitbit, and other health-related products, online movies like Netflix and Amazon, email, 
online video chat, remote security system, weather, restaurant services, TV remote, watching TV or movies, social media, remote desktop, telnet or SSH services, network scanning, a wireless site survey, machine to machine communications with lots of other devices that communicate via wireless or Bluetooth. And you know what I discovered? The smartphone can even be used as a telephone. And the trend of using our smartphones as the center of our information universe is just continuing to expand. Strangely enough, you know what I've been using my smartphone for the most lately? As Keith mentioned, a flashlight. Who would have expected we'd be using a phone as a flashlight? Makes no sense, but dang, it works great. So let's go on to tip number two with Tim Warner. Good morning, Tim. Welcome to Nugget Cash. Thank you for being part of the show. You're welcome. Thanks, Steve. So this week we are talking about the top IT trends for the year 2013. So give us what you feel is one of the top IT trends of 2013, in your opinion. Yes, definitely. Well, I'd like to say, how often have you read or heard the term cloud computing in 2013? A lot. And you might have received some messaging from your boss at work, we need to investigate this. Of course, the next question is, how exactly does cloud computing work? So we have this sea of terminology, public cloud, private cloud, hybrid cloud. What does it mean? You have to know the terms before you can get off the ground. So to that end, I've put together a little micro nugget that explains those differences. As you know, cloud computing terminology is in a state of heavy flux now in the 21st century. You'll find, if you do some internet research, many contradictory definitions and out-and-out -out inaccurate definitions. That's to be expected, and this is one of the reasons why I'm personally so interested in cloud computing. The technology is so new and in such a state of volatility. The purpose of this micro nugget is to help us differentiate between the three main cloud types, public, private, and hybrid. You'll find that the terminology tends to step on each other. You'll find, for instance, references to cloud delivery models or service deliveries, instead talking about SaaS, PaaS, and IaaS. If you want more information on differentiating these service models, see my associated micro nugget on our YouTube channel. The first cloud type is easiest to understand, the public cloud. These are cloud services that are offered to the general public. We would turn to cloud services most typically because of their flexibility, their resiliency, their geographic distribution, and the fact that we generally can just pay for the services we need. End user public cloud services include things like Dropbox and Office 365 and Google Apps. The confusing thing about the public cloud is that we see lots of bleed over into the private cloud space. For instance, Amazon Web Services plus using AWS privately is equal to what's called the hybrid cloud. A private cloud is defined as an infrastructure where a business owns its own cloud services. Some hallmarks that define a private cloud are things like, can you do self-service? Can your employees dynamically provision virtual machines with just a couple mouse clicks and a web browser? Do you have automation in place that if your virtual exchange server fails, you can spin up a replica instance in mere seconds? Resiliency. This stuff is pretty expensive to do in a purely private, roll-your-own service. And therefore, the private cloud is primarily of interest to DevOps, people who are software developers or systems administrators or both. An example of a private cloud service would be Microsoft System Center 2012, in particular, Virtual Machine Manager and Hyper-V 3.0. Finally, the hybrid cloud is the best of both worlds. This is where a company leverages public cloud services such as Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud, Windows Azure for their own private use. So you can let the service provider take care of all the expensive infrastructure and you still have that security. However, data security and data sovereignty are the key issues at play with hybrid clouds. Everything is in the cloud these days and personally, I love it. I love that I can get to everything I need and use regardless of what computer I'm sitting at. Gone are the days of keeping everything on a little, you know, jump drive. But speaking of which, those little guys can get you into trouble, as Jeremy Chiara tells us next. Good morning, Jeremy. Welcome to NuggetCast. Thanks for being hey. here. Hey, thanks. Good, good morning to you. 
So, top trends of 2013 from an IT point of view. Tell us what you got. Uh, I would say top trend, in my, my opinion, is the rise of BYOD, bring your own device, which has pretty much encompassed just about every environment that's there and completely undermines the way traditional IT has looked at things. Uh, so, matter of fact, I've, uh, I've prepared a little whiteboard for this, so if you want to come with me, let's go, uh, let's go discuss it. Yep, let's go check out the whiteboard. Well, here's a flyby of my best practices for BYOD. Number one, save oxygen. I have spent so much time explaining security to users and I've, I've come to the conclusion they, they just don't care until they lose their identity or have their bank account drained. Uh, they just don't care about security. It's all about convenience and smartphones are convenient and tablets are convenient. So unless you have a corporate policy and, and I'm talking one with teeth banning BYOD devices, uh, you really have to take the approach of if you can't beat them, join them. So how do you join them the best way? Well, number one, restrict the LAN. And when I say LAN, I'm talking about Ethernet cabled devices to non-BYOD. I mean, you can't just say, oh, well, you know, yeah, bring in your home computer, plug it into your cubicle. I mean, LAN equals corporate devices. And the reason for that is just about every BYOD device, smartphone, tablet, laptop, they're all wireless. And wireless, if you have any decent vendor, will support segmentation based on SSID to internet only, to where you can say, hey, if they join this type of what this SSID, this wireless network, the only thing they can access is the internet. Matter of fact, a lot of uh, corporations that I've worked with buy a separate DSL or cable modem connection, just kind of a junk internet connection just for those devices. Watch out for flash drives. Uh, you lose a laptop, people are like, oh, that's a big deal, but it's going to get reported, right? Flash drives could be full of all kinds of corporate data, and it's a little $10 device that people lose all the time, and they're not going to report it. So uh, one of the corporate policies may be those little USB flash drives are restricted, uh, and if you plug it into the computer, it just doesn't work. There's ways of doing that. Finally, prepare for IP shortages. I know when BYOD hit uh, a couple organizations, they had no idea just how many IP addresses those devices suck up. I mean, people are literally walking technology blobs uh, nowadays. So you will have to create separate VLAN, separate IP address uh, subnets that you're able to allocate at will. You know one of the things I love about the holidays? Pie. But this year it wasn't baked pie that trended through the IT world, but raspberry pie. And I don't mean the fruit. So here to tell us all about it is Sean Powers. Very excited. I want to show you the best way to make cheesecake using technology right here in the Powers family kitchen. Okay, Sean, I'll assume you're making some kind of analogy here. Continue. First thing we need to do when we're making a cheesecake is decide how big of a cheesecake do you want. You can go with something very small, which is definitely not the way that I like to make cheesecake. So your choices are basically round or square. I like to have a nice yellow cake bottom on my cheesecake. And for that, you're going to need some enriched yellow cake uranium. Now, I'm not sure where you're going to get the yellow cake uranium. I assume as a technologist, you probably have access to as much yellow cake as you need. So, we're going to put that on the bottom of the pan. So, we're going to start with this mixing bowl. We're going to use enriched flour. Now, you don't want to confuse the enriched flour with the enriched uranium. I've made that mistake. Wow! So, take a stick of butter. Make sure it's very fresh. Okay, hold on. I don't think he got the memo. I gotta go stop him. And once you have fresh butter, you're gonna wanna open it up, or you know what? We're gonna blend it really well. You don't even need to take the wrapper off. As long as you mix it well, you'll never know. And we're gonna put it in the oven. Now, before we do all of- Sean, what are you doing? Stop! What? No, I'm doing the, the annual cheesecake recipe. No, 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 no. I said raspberry oh. pie, not cheesecake. Yeah, I heard raspberry pie. Sean, we need to demonstrate the raspberry pie. I don't really like raspberry pie. The seeds get stuck. Technology, Sean. The technology? Yes, this is a tech podcast. I have a raspberry pie right here. That's what the crumble topping was going to be. Read your email, Sean. Oh, my gosh. Apparently, we're doing some top five technology things of 2013, so yeah, these are pretty cool too. I'm gonna go. 
Okay, note to self, follow up with Sean to make sure he gets the memos. In the meantime, let's head over to Jim Anthony to hear all about social media and customer engagement. Jim, welcome to NuggetCast. How are you doing this morning? Terrific. How about you, Steve? Uh, doing great. So Good. we are talking about the top IT trends of 2013. What is one of yours? I think it's, it's kind of a combination of two trends. I just got back from Dreamforce, and one of the things we heard a lot out there was that customers are 70% of the way through a buying cycle before they ever contact a sales rep or the company that they want to buy from. So one of the big trends now is that companies are trying to figure out ways to engage those customers prior to that 70% being completed, and they're using social media to do that. And so I've got a little whiteboard for you that we can take a look at a little bit more information about that. So Blue Wolf is a consulting partner of Salesforce. And they recently just came out with a survey of just about 500 Salesforce customers. And what they found is that basically the big picture, customer engagement is the new bottom line is the way they put it. 84% of all the people uh, interviewed believe that customer engagement is going to overtake productivity as a primary driver of growth. So just think about all those business books we've read over the years about productivity and efficiency and that kind of thing. But now it's all about engagement. 60% of the people that were interviewed said that customer engagement is the top priority. And the key issue is that social media is moving beyond just contacts and simple interactions. It's now about community and collaboration and engagement. There's really three things you can do with social media. You can broadcast a message. You can listen to people by just you know listening to their feeds. Or you can really engage and interact. And this is where the focus is today. The reason this is so critical is there's a new statistic out. 70% of the process is done before buyers engage with a salesperson. They're talking to their friends, they're hitting the social networks, they're learning as much as they can about something, anything, before they buy it and before they engage salespeople. And so what companies have figured out is they need to be a part of that engagement process before they get the chance to ever sell anything. For that first 70% of the buying process, companies need to get engaged with customers and they're using social media to do it. And last but not least, one more trend for 2013, and that is virtualization. So let's go to trainer Anthony Sequera, who can tell us all about it. So welcome Anthony Nuggetcast. How are you doing this morning? Doing great, Steve. Thanks so much for having me. Awesome. Now I noticed you're wearing the Google Glass. Yes, these are Google Glass, so if I space out for a moment, it's because I'm watching a movie during this Nuggetcast. No, no, I won't do that. Yeah, we have an upcoming series uh, introducing Google Glass, and we'll have to do a Nuggetcast on these. Now, that's a great idea. But before we get too far into the future, let's take a look at this year's top IT trends. What do you think is one of the top trends for you? You know, for me, it's just continuing to see virtualization push into all aspects of IT. It used to be we just did virtualization for like a desktop operating system, and then it was servers. Now we're seeing virtualization in the network equipment itself. It's really, really remarkable. Steve, if you don't mind, I'd love to show you in a quick whiteboard session exactly how pervasive virtualization can be today. So here at the whiteboard, let's give an example of just how pervasive virtualization could be in our IT infrastructure. So here we have the hardware components of the Cisco UCS system. This is also my Christmas shopping list. So here you can see, uh, let me describe for you the incredible levels of virtualization that we have here. First, we have the UCS system itself. Notice there is a server blade. There's just one server blade of eight server blades that are in this system. On that, we install VMware for the virtualization of an operating system. 
So there's our first bit of virtualization. We have something like Win2K running in a VM on that particular blade. Now, inside the blade at the back is a network interface card. That network interface card is virtualized into virtual network interface cards. These make a connection to something called an input-output module, which makes it up to the fabric interconnect. The fabric interconnect connects into, let's say, a Nexus 2K. This is virtualized. It thinks it is a line card inside the Nexus 5000 that lives upstream. It connects into something like a Nexus 7000, but it doesn't just connect inside the 7K as a whole. It connects to a virtual device context within that Nexus 7000. Maybe there's another VDC for another company that's using this equipment. All of this traffic, by the way, is sent over a virtual local area network. Over here, we have connectivity that follows a similar path, but we go to a storage area network MDS device. And guess what? That's done over a virtual storage area network. There is virtualization at every turn in this infrastructure. Whew. So there you have it, our top six trends of 2013. And I'm including Raspberry Pi in that, but not uranium enriched cheesecake. Sorry, Sean. So that we don't take up too much of your holiday time, let's wrap it up there. If you're not a CBT Nugget subscriber, but are curious as to how our training works or the courses we have available, check out our website and click on any of our courses. Remember, the first two minutes of each episode can be watched for free. You can contact the show at cbtpodcasts at cbtnuggets.com. You can watch the show on our blog, on our YouTube channel, or in iTunes. And we love to get feedback. And with that, please have a fantastic holiday. We here at CBT Nuggets really appreciate all of you, our fans and our customers that have made this a fantastic year. We're looking forward to so many more exciting things to come in 2014 as we help all of you watch, learn, and conquer. Happy holidays, everyone. Wife's apron, not tell her that I'm using it. Hello, children. Today. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, that's so funny. <laughs> so take a stick of butter, make sure it's very fresh. Also, make sure your family doesn't see you lick the butter. And last but not least, one more trend for Troy. Because when it comes to reactions, I don't want to risk a reaction with the aluminum pie pan. Shh. Not here at CBT Nuggets. I like to have 